morning, everybody. Looks like we're in for a busy public forum, but I welcome you all here. And any apologies? There being none, we will move into public forum. Lynn, please. Yeah, uh, good morning, um, the document I'm, I'm speaking today about the issue of the Pahuth Power Tree Tangi Manua on Paku Road, Paku Drive. Um, it's a, an issue that I've spoken to you before about on February the 20th, I think it was last, or February 2020. Um, and at that time, um, we raised the issue that it was a special tree to the community, was a special tree to Tangata Whenua, and today um, there are um, people from the Marae, Shao, Kraus, and her mum. Um, and also, we acknowledge that there is a health and safety issue, but we wish to say that there are other um, solutions. Um, and I guess this is accountable, I'm not sure. Yes. Um, and I'm not in the business of having solutions, but I know that there are shared zones everywhere in this country that make it safe for pedestrians, for cyclists, for trees and for cars. And um, we'd really like those solutions to be explored rather than the idea of either destroying or cutting down or pruning severely Tangi Manua. In the documents, I have uh, stated on the very first page the results of a social media post that I did on Tyra Chit Chat. And it gives the um, responses. And also, uh, there are pages of petition that ask that the community board and the TCDC do not chop down or harm Tani Um And that was in one week, I think I counted about 150 signatures. I didn't want to leave it longer than a week um, because people were helping and it gets to be tricky, really. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I don't know, do you have questions or...? Uh, no, it is a hardy uh, monthly uh, discussion on this tree, but thank you for your submission. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I guess. Uh, in addition to this, I just want to note there is a um, an online change.org petition that I was told this morning now has 700 signatures. So uh, there's yeah, there's quite a lot of interest, um, and the community is very attached to this. Okay. 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 I don't remember even suggesting it would be more. Bob, oh. oh. are you hiding somewhere, mate? Oh. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I think you have my presentation. Yes, you do. Um, I, just, I just want to put some perspective on this hog and path issue. Um, the hog and path has been blown out of proportion, it's been a total distraction. If you look at the first first picture, that's the area that we're talking about that is causing the controversy. Um, if you look at the big black house in the background, that was built probably 12 months ago, and all the construction for that house, all the trucks came around and drove around this piece of reserve um, and destroyed destroyed the reserve. I'll give it gentlemen some or two loss because he actually paid for the replacement of the path that was destroyed as well. But the reserve never got repaired. Yeah. So if you look at the next one, this is an overhead shot of the area 
of that part of the reserve. And this area was meant to be planted out three years ago and never got done. So the consequence of that is the sand blows up, goes all over the reserve, the grass doesn't grow, and it's a total disaster. What you can see at the low left-hand side is we've now actually got the walkway going down at an angle, and that's the standard practice from now on to try and stop the sand blowing out. Um, if you look at the next one, this is a good illustration of what can be achieved. So the Road Pass Association put these posts in in 2012 because the council wouldn't do it. So the man shed made the posts, we dug the holes and put them in there. And as you can see in the left hand lower corner, the inner post now is buried in the dunes. Now that's because in 2015, we put additional sand over the edge. We took another four metres of the reserve, we planted it out and it got maintained. And now we've gained um, some 12 to 13 metres of June back over that period of time. So it's over a period of seven years, we've grown, got 13 metres back. So this is what can be achieved at minimum cost. But for some reason, the council staff decided to go off on their own tangent with no engagement with the community. Um, and I'd like to thank the board for their response to that initial proposal telling the staff to go back and engage with the community. And we did have a meeting, 150 people turned up, three of you guys turned up, um, and we all want the same thing. We want the dunes maintained, but we want to still maintain the reserve, and it can be done. And it's also an essential part of the shoreline management plan, because a lot of security for power and is based on the height of the dunes and how those dunes are maintained. So we can't continue to do this ad hoc option and do a bit just to keep people happy. It's an essential part of what's been done. And the last one is major erosion that happened in October, November. And the only way we're going to address that is doing push-ups and sand, sand placement. We've got a consent to move 2,000 cubes from Waterbury Point. Um, and that's 213 eight metre truck loads at a minimal cost. When I got a cost six months ago, it was $16,000. So minimal cost to get, to get some done. We just can't keep walking away from these issues um, when we've employed consultants on shoreline management and paying them $2 million. We've got to get some results out of the $2 million bucks and it's got to be done properly. And it, we're not asking for a great deal of money, but a lot of this stuff is getting done in Mercury Bay, Cooks Beach, Flaxmere Bay, Buffalo Beach, all those areas have had sand push-ups, repairs to the reserves, repairs, so all we're asking for is a level playing field to get a little bit of money to actually look after our number one asset. And if the council come back for another proposal, we do the same as last time and say, go back and engage with the community. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. <laughs> well, uh, I'd just like to remind you, we are being recorded, so keep that in mind, please. Um, Mr. Barr. Good morning. Aho, ko whainui aho. And so, I'm on Neil Barr, I'm the deputy over at the, the Bowling Club there. I'm also a Tainui in Mahuta descent, so I descend from this area. <clears throat> we have given the letter to the committee, obviously it's self-explanatory. We're not looking to race into this. We have formed a committee of about 14 people that's both culturally and um, diverse, and we also have male and female members on that committee, so it's a very diverse committee. <clears throat> uh, we uh, seeking the ability to have a conditional, um, what we would call an agreement with the council on a portion of land at the end on the headland to build a small boating club. 
Um, we have we intend we're looking at about a thousand square meters of land and a 400 square meter boating club, and which will be designed to look like an old boat shed under the pine trees and linking to the coast guard. We have um, have a a, a, a um, document out for asking for support from people at the moment. It's currently standing at 500 signatures, and we have had tacit support from some of the local organisations in Papua as well. There are lots of issues to be addressed, like parking, um, uh, the environment around there, uh, uh, iwi permissions, all those things, and we need to go through those. But in order to spend the money to go through that, we have a good team of consultants uh, in place. In order to go through that, we actually need to be able to get a conditional agreement uh, from at the council that says, yes, you can look at that piece of land, you can do your homework on it, and provided you meet all the issues that council have and the people have, then perhaps you will consider that it goes ahead. But we actually, to spend the money, we need to be able to allocate that piece of land to it. It's not uh, unusual in this council. There is a boating club on reserve lands in Whangamata. There is a, apparently one mooted up at Maharangi at the moment on reserve lands. There's surf clubs on surf lands. There's a restaurant on the surf land, on, on sorry, on council reserve land at Whangamata. So it's not without prison. And we're not wanting to create a monolith. We're wanting something that sits in character with the area. And, and you know, with drinking and driving, we can't all be tripping around to Tairua to uh, go to the boating club to drink uh, and have a you know have a few wines and meals. So it needs to, you know, and also will support our local community, which does need a little bit of diversity in what uh, that is offered here. So we're asking that you seriously consider that that you give us if you allocate this piece of land to us conditionally. We then have to go through all the processes. So we're not asking you to approve it now. We're asking you to say if you can prove to us that we can develop that on this land. And that it will meet all the needs and of the locals and the community, then we would move. We could move forward with it. We would go through the normal consent process. So that's all we're asking. I know this is about the third time we've come. I understand that everybody feels that JC is a one-man band. That's not correct. He's got a team of twelve behind him, but he's certainly been the motivator behind it, and he needs to be recognised for that. So all we're asking is your tacit support to move forward on this. Thank you. Thank you. Ma'am. Rowena, good morning. Good morning. So, um, firstly, um, I'm quite nervous, and when I get nervous, I speak quite loudly. So, I'm not trying to yell at you guys, just saying. Uh, also, my um, <coughs> presentation is five minutes and eight seconds long. So I ask that I have the, um, your grace to continue that extra eight seconds for it. Certainly. So first would like to see a show of hands of people in the room who support the development of the skate park at Corey Park Main. So you can see, once again, this uh, decision and thought in the community is the majority. And so here's my presentation. Council's actions have left Tyra State Park supporters and lobbyists feeling frustrated, disappointed, angry and betrayed. Council's recommendation that this community board revoke all previous decisions made on the Tyra State Park makes a mockery of the democratic process. Yeah, yeah. Our supporters are suggesting a police investigation into this matter and that a judicial review of Council's recommendation to the Community Board to revoke its decision be undertaken before any decision or voting takes place today. An important requisite for ensuring privacy and governance is the absence of corruption. Members of the Tyra Sport and Recreation Trust believe bullying, double dealing, bribery, secret meetings, Withholding information and power planning are rife within TCDC HQ. A sworn off affidavit has been offered by an individual stating a $30,000 bribe was offered to Sandra Gowdy to halt progress of the skate park at Corey Park Domain and put it instead at the Pepe next to the homes of people who purchased property in a passive recreation zone. Another requirement of ensuring probity and governance are effective laws, rules and regulations, and more important, an effective and fair implementation of those laws. Why make land use rules 
and then actively seek to break them. Jim Jackson, spokesperson for the uh, Preserved Cory Park Domain Society, told our trust directly that he and Sandra go way back and have a good working relationship. So a conflict of interest may exist here. Sandra Gowdy, in my opinion, should have no vote on the Tyra Skate Park. We were informed, informed TCDC's legal team did not view the factual history of this long fought for project. What they did view were communications from those opposed containing misinformation. Lynn Dallison at this meeting today is cited by Neil Plummer in his communication to council as an opponent. She is in fact a supporter. Council lawyers gave their advice based on half-cocked information, and this is unethical and unfair to the consistent losers in this situation, our tamariki, our children. Our lawyers have requested the full report the council's legal team has prepared. The Tyra Sport and Recreation Trust asked council to disclose who the staff member was that liaised with council's legal team. Maybe it was the tea lady. We don't believe the full picture has been given to TCDC on how much communication went to the community and we need this righted. As far as consultation goes, this project is approaching its fourth decade of consultation. We want to know exactly what part of the, cons of the consultation process council has not followed according to Preserve Cory Park Domain Society lawyers Simpson Grayson. Why has this information that we have requested not being shared with us. Opponents must have been living under rocks to charge that they had not been fully informed with the volume of TCDC media releases, newspaper articles, and in Tyra specifically, $1,000 that was spent advertising locally to keep people in the loop. No decision or vote on Council's recommendation regarding the skate park at Cory Park Domain should take place today. All of you should choose not to vote today. We ask instead that this decision, this very important and critical decision, be set aside until our lawyers, Thompson Wake, have received response from Council to their requests and also until we have a full community board representation with a new candidate replacing Anne Stewart Ball who resigned because of this lack of integrity around this issue. I believe it's time for you guys to take some time out and put all the facts on the table. As the trust tasked with raising $150,000 as the community's one third financial contribution to the skate park, we have not been kept in the loop. In fact, the opposite is true and we want justice. Thank you. Jackie, 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 session. Kia ora um, a little bit of a hard presentation to follow, and I haven't um, done the same preparation that Rowena has um, after a week of laying quite low. Um, I think, like everybody who's spoken today, there's quite overwhelming the number of supporters when Lynn talks about the submissions um, and same for an event happening over from um, over on Pawanui. You know, we've had a thousand signatures on a petition um, for a state park at Crew Park. And as you say, we're entering our fourth decade with the only location being discussed four decades on being Crew Park. And why is that? Because that is the only zone that complies. It is the only one that meets our Resource Management Act and meets everything else. And I really just feel so disappointed that council couldn't support their staff sufficiently, knowing full well that this was going to be a battle, and left a poor person out there to not be legally supported from the outset when we knew we were going to get to this at the last minute. You know, where was that legal guidance throughout the entire process so that when the group of antis who say they've got 95% support, which is absolute crap because we door knocked in November and spoke to everybody around here, there is people on Manai Road who would say to us, I can't write my name down, I'll be targeted. We have people who have donated $1,000 who neighbours are against it and who have said to us, 
you can't tell anyone we've done it yet, you can tell them when we start digging. The power in those who are negative and really pushing for people to say this isn't right is actually really false. There's a really small group, and I'd say it's probably less than 10 families, with some very aging people in that category. And unfortunately, they do have grandkids. But I don't know if they don't care about them or what, because it's all right for them to go and play rugby, cricket, go and smack a tennis ball around. But what, we're so discriminating against skateboarding as a sport? I mean, it's an Olympic sport. Barbara Kendall wants to come here and bring the big skateboard along with her. The TV are really interested and will probably be here later this week. This is ridiculous. This is our kambariki and our future generations and those who are now not even kids anymore, who have now got kids of their own, who all they wanted when they were young was a skate park. And there's a few old people, and I do say old people, but I'm sorry, there's a few old people that are really preventing this from happening in the zone where all of our sports should go. It doesn't go next to a playground. There is no way, and I can assure that our Manai representatives would say, we're not cutting down the trees at Pepe. We're not reclaiming the foreshore at Pepe. We're not going to build out where the water goes or anything like that in an area where it's not zoned for it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. come on. The yeah. data is there. The stats are there. We have done the feasibility studies. So if the council hasn't done its job well, and I really feel for those in the council who obviously haven't had the support and guidance required to do their job properly, Hopefully the next time, not hopefully, the next time when these gaps are plugged and the legal pieces that were identified, there will be no legal arguments anymore. It'll go at Corey Park because all those points will be addressed. We've laid all your cards on the table. We now know what needs to be plugged. And whether it gets fixed in the next week or so, or we need to take six to nine more months and get it through. It'll be a car park and it'll be a skate park where all the sports belong. And I hope that the community board is on board with achieving what four decades of families in Kaurua want and need and agree perhaps a vote shouldn't be taking place when there's not accurate data being provided. Because we've seen the misinformation provided that says what 98% or 95% of people down on our road don't want it. It's not true. We've done that. We've spoken to those people. Mm -hmm. I've had them. I've had Johnny Mason come over to me and personally stand at our house and say, it's not true yet. I'm happy to support. I wanted to stay park when I was young. There's so much pressure being put on those residents that they don't know what else to do. Mm -hmm. So I think mm -hmm. time to grow up, people. Mm -hmm. Skateboarding is a sport. It's mm -hmm. going to be at the Olympics. We've got some friggin' awesome kids here who will probably be at the Olympics. And what are they going to say when they get up there to get their gold medal? Oh, we've been allowed to skate at home. Because yeah. <laughs> our oldies and title wouldn't let it. We could play rugby and cricket, but that was it. So I just, yeah, hope that the community board listen to the community. There's a 1,000 signatures. There's 150,000 in the bank. You know, show me the money, honey. But I'll be a son of the Yeah, we showed you the money, honey. Show us the freaking skate park. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Ben Dunbar. Sure. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm here to talk on two things that I won't take long. Firstly, is the tree, this particular tree. Um, and I firstly wanted to clarify. Is this being discussed in a workshop, closed workshop, subsequent? No, no. So what has come to the fore that this should be suddenly appearing? No, nobody's ever, ever offered to chop it down. Okay. We'd like to make it safe. Is it? Nobody has offered to chop it down. It's been offered to prune it or put a but, bridge but around we, it. What I'm asking but is not when, when, is that, when is that discussion taking place? Because when is that discussion taking place about the pruning or the option? Because it's not. I'm not the aware that any discussion is, is on the table for the tree. Okay. That's one. Um, so I just wanted to signal that if discussion is taking place in a closed workshop, I'll be reporting it to the Woods General. And that um, if decisions are made upon this issue without involving the EWIC, I've contacted Nahi Hay. Under Section 78 of the Local Government Act, there must be consultation with everyone on Palma. So my lawyers will address that issue with you. And I know here that this is, the locker would be moored at this tree before the chief's body was uplifted for the burial cave. It is one of the most significant heritage issues we have in Kairua. If we want heritage to be here, you don't touch this tree without full consultation. Secondly, on the issue of the Kairua Torres Fat Park, I just want to talk about process. I'm not going to talk 
uh, away the other scab. I simply want to point out that two councillors, we have two councillors here who represent us, they voted not to support this recommendation. So the people who care about this space, who are here, who are not tens, not fiddling up, voted not to support this recommendation. Secondly, if you do support this, and you do choose to, what they say here, resolves it will not exercise its delegated authority to make further decisions about the skate park, and will refer any future decisions in Tauria to the council, what's the point of having a community board? Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, we, yeah. we used to have community empowerment. Under this mayor, community empowerment's been stripped back to the castle and Thames, mm -hmm. and you make decisions on smaller issues. You agree with this, what's to say that next time you make a decision they don't like, they send you a note like this? Yeah. You are obliged to obey this. Mm -hmm. If you look at the process, I assume that the legal opinion gives options. And one of them, we, we defend what you've done. Yeah. Councillors spent a million dollars fighting this smart environmental issue, no trouble. The minute we get an issue here where I think we follow due process, I think what's happened, an out-of-town person with bundles of money has turned up and said, oh, I wasn't advised in May, I didn't hear till July, therefore you wipe your whole process. In 2016, it was designated as a skate park. Mm. He submitted in 2018 to the long-term plan, and then he says, oh, I didn't know, I wasn't consulted. And then he never turned up to any of the meetings that you had in September, October, December. So why bend over and go, council, give it to me? Mm. <laughs> I mean, seriously. That's what it is. This is not just this issue. This is about the integrity and sovereignty of the whole community board. And not only yours, but all of them. Thank you. Are there any further people that wish to speak to public forum? There being none. Okay. Um, the, can I have a move of the second that we receive the speakers on public forum? Yep. Thank you. All in favour? Aye. Aye. No one against? 1.3. Right, any items not on the agenda? There being none, is there any conflict of interest? <laughs> there being none? We move on to item 2.1, the Torres Escape Park. Oh, sorry, 1.5. I'm just the minutes to confirmation. We move in second that we receive the minutes from, or confirm rather the minutes from the last meeting. Yeah. Seconded. Any discussion on those minutes? Being done. All in favour, we'll move on to 2.1, the Torres Skate Park. Can I have a move and a second, please? So this is, if you want to open the report. Yep, report, open the report. We have a move and a second, please, we open the report. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Obviously, there's a lot of community interest in this particular project and um, also a lot of um, emotion, high emotions. So I just want to firstly report to the community board that um, the council did make a recommendation um, to this community board that you revoke the resolutions. Um, it says in the report that I would update you uh, on that at this meeting. Um, I want to run through the four options that have been considered and to talk about each of them uh, in turn because the reasons why the recommendation is to revoke the resolutions is to avoid the need for 
legal proceedings to take place. So the first option that's been cons considered was to defend the application for a judicial review. That means <clears throat> that nothing could take place in terms of building a skate park in Tairua until after those hearings had been concluded, which would be not until next year, quite likely. There would be at least $100,000 worth of expenditure associated with defending the, um, the review, and there would be uncertainty of the outcome. There could be conditions placed on the council about location, which could be unacceptable to you and to the community. And that is the reason for not recommending that option. The second option is to agree not to proceed with the skate park at Corey Park, but instead seek an alternative location. Simply selecting an alternative location could result in opposition from a completely different group of ratepayers. The community funding that has been raised by the Tyrell Sports and Recreation Trust may not be made available for an alternative location because, as you've heard, they're very committed to Corey Park. There would very likely be a requirement for a resource consent for an alternative location, and um, that incurs costs. And again, if there is uncertainty of outcome associated with that. And then new plans would need to be developed um, and more delay. The third option is abandoning the provision of the skate park entirely. And I guess it's clear that the whole community supports a skate park, even the um, Corey Park Protection Society have indicated that they support a skate park, just not at Corey Park. So that is not a viable option. So the last option, which is the recommended option, is to revoke the decisions and avoid that legal expenditure Enable the process to start again. The judicial review would, um, would be resolved because there would be nothing to review because the resolutions would be revoked. Tyra will eventually get a skate park and the whole community will have the opportunity for input to the site selection process. The site selection process will be undertaken in a rigorous and um, transparent manner there will be a proper assessment of options and there will be full engagement with this community board and with the community about each of those options and the opportunity for the preferred option to emerge from that process. The reason for referring it back to council is because of the, there are already claims of bias and predetermination by various parts of the community about the members of this community board and that would remove that um, those assertions from the whole exercise. It would mean that you would be active participants in the process, you would simply not be the final decision makers. And so I guess that really summarises um, where things are at and the recommendations um, two through seven <coughs> are, are, are what I recommend that you pass. Jerry? Yes, uh, thank you, Sally, for your words. Um, yeah, I've got a few things to say about this. Um, this is a very much a moment in time about the democratic process of, re of uh, community boards and where they go. To take a decision that we've spent two years putting together and then throw it down the drain and let a council take over that decision on a community-based project, which the community board responsibilities are to community-based projects, in my mind, is a step backwards. Um, the prior speaker said, and it's true, in 2016 there was a designation to the district plan that made this active space open on Corey Park to allow these things to happen. Um, the project is of low significance. The local authority is not required by the section alone to undertake consultation on this process because it doesn't require to go through the resource consent process. There are um, there has been discussion, there has been decisions, there has been 
angst over this and pressure to some people around this table over and above what I would call normal, with abuse in the, in, in the street and everything. But we got to it. On this, uh, in the February the 17th, we sat down and made a decision. And we were hoping that decision would lead us a step forward to get this progress and this action on this part moving forward. We now find, because there has been an affidavit from one person, that we have to go back through the whole process, and that frightens me. Where is the process going with this? And I'll read you quickly. This is from the project manager who was part of this whole project from, from the start. And it's May meeting the board considered all possible sites for the comprehensive table studying pros and cons for each site. The board chose to make a decision to investigate detailed design with surrounding residents at Quarry Park and full consultation followed. No decision had been made at this point to build at Quarry Park. Merely it was, it was the most suitable location and subject to consultation with surrounding residents. It is critical because the decision that followed in February was based on submissions received from surrounding residents. A design that addresses surrounding residents' concerns and acoustic report, stating no more than minor effects by a reputable acoustic engineering firm, certificate of compliance and certificate of compliance and a summary of 30 years of community involvement engagement around the skate park in Tyrol. There is no doubt in my mind that the decision-making process under the Local Government Act was met. So we are assured all the way through that we were following process. These people who have made this claim didn't front to a community board meeting, didn't engage with us. They wrote letters to the mayor instead of talking to us. They made our job feel like it wasn't even important for them to engage to us. They were not part of the process. So I'm saying to the board, do not revoke your decisions that you spent two years making and, and ask the council to go back and do some more research and follow and support us over here and follow the process over there to make sure that we are being looked after as a community and our decisions are respected. Mm -hmm. uh, well, for a start, I think people have got, got to get it through their heads that we definitely want a skateboard park. Mm. I mean, that's, that's I think, 100% of the members here want a skateboard park. Mm. Um, we're just trying to find the easiest way to get it. And I was involved when they tried to get the thing in 2010 to 2013, and we wound up with a little half ass exercise yard down there. Okay, that was never going to be that, and the, the concession to a skateboard thing down there was the meandering path. Um, that, so get get it right. We need, we definitely want a skateboard park. We have to find the easiest way to do that, and the most economic way. We're talking here big money to go to lawyers, and the lawyers are just going to sit there and rub their hands together. And think, oh, there now this is a good end. Um, so if we can avoid that, well, well and good. If it's going to take it's going to take twelve months to get it into court anyway, um, let's maybe start the process again. Um, the fastest way to the fastest way to get it. Four decades, Chris. Quiet, please. Quiet, please. Yeah, exactly. Um, the fastest way to get it is what we want. Um, I'm just, yeah, anyway, that's me. I have my concerns. I'm, I'm sit with Chris. I have great fear of this going to court and the lawyers just put in their pockets. And the delay, I'm really concerned about the delay here. I would, I mean, I'd like the council to pick this up and it takes all the pressure off us here in town. People maybe start talking to me again, cut this vicious deal that's gone through the chit chat, and there's some other significant factors happening out there now in our community, some really horrible things. So I, I, I'm, I'm, yep, I'm all for council to pick this thing up and take it back and start the process. What will you be remembered for? 
Ben. Okay. Yeah, right, you want to say something? Well, somebody, I'm not resident to Tyre. That's very hard to get your head around it. Um, I hear what the Tully said here. It doesn't make some sense, but it's, it's wanted in Tyre. The decision's been made with community board years ago, never mind this one. So, if somebody wants to, doesn't want it and wants to take the council to court, let them do it. But, yeah. then, yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, who's going to fund it? Can I have an amendment? Can I pass an amendment? Just the meeting? I'd like an amendment to the meetings, to the motion, please. Okay. That the community board does not revoke the three of the three um, motions or, or the meetings motions on the skate park and the, the issue is taken back to council to review its information to Brookfields to ensure it is provide the sufficient all the uh, relevant information. Do you have a second? Oh, I'll second that. You can put the motion if you want. Mm. 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 Mm.
you ask not proceeding with the your recommendation is that you not proceed with the resolutions that are in yes. the report, yeah. and that you are instead requesting that council provide further information to council's legal advisors. It's not appropriate to mention reports because that's council's decision as to which legal advisors that they use. Um, so that so you're recommending that council ensures that the information that has been provided to its legal advisors in respect of the Tyro Escape Park is reviewed yeah. to ensure that it's comprehensive. comprehensive. The difficulty with that um, is that we have a judicial review process that is in progress and if you revoke the resolutions, that terminates the judicial review. Yep. Your approach will leave the judicial review live mm -hmm. and it will take its course. Although council can apply for a stay to delay. To delay. Yeah. To delay. Yes. So I, after reading the affidavit and, and the discussions I've had, I feel that there is lack of clarity about the information mm -hmm. supplied to Brookfields is true and correct. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm. Okay, get down to sorry. Sorry? Oh, yeah. Are you having difficulty writing this? Well, I'm listening and, and it's been it's been twisted around a bit. Well, we just want to revoke the... Um, no, you're not revoking. You have not I mean, support not to revoking revoke. the decision. Mm. And you don't, you don't have to do that. You don't have to mention revoking because there is, that's, separate. that's a separate resolution. The resolutions in the report are about revoking. You're putting up a different motion recommending that council provides further information. No, I'm to clear it. about this, Sally. I do not want the this community board's decision to be revoked yeah. in those meetings. I'm clear about that. Yeah. Okay? Is that, where, is that where you're coming from? No. I'm I do not want the decisions made by the community board on the 17th of February or May or November or March, whatever it is, revoked. No, but... but by simply requesting further information be provided to the, the legal advisors, you're not revoking the resolutions. These these resolutions don't even get put on the table. Well, what we're actually saying is that we go ahead with the schedule part, and if somebody wants to dispute it, they will take but us to court. They already have. Well, yeah. they already have. And, and, we, and we're not. We don't want to go and. Redo, redo the whole system over again. So you tell me clearly that that my amendment dissolves those revoking. Yeah, because you haven't these these revoking resolutions have not been put yet. Okay. So it would stand by itself. We'll delete everything else, and yeah. yours would be yeah. just. Yeah, and then we request. can vote on the other one if we want to. Yeah, if your re if your resolution loses, then then the chair back reverts the, back to the, to the yeah. resolutions in, yeah. in the paper. Yeah. If your resolution passes, mm -hmm. then that's the that's end of the Okay, right. Does that, do you understand that? I understand that. Yeah. I understand no, what you're talking about. Yeah. Have some clarification around this judicial review. That's it's, it's still underway. Yes, it's still live. Yeah. The agreement um, with the applicants is that um, if if you follow the resolutions that are in this report, then then it removes the basis for the judicial review, and so they will it will fail, and that and it will get closed out, so it won't be live. If you revoke them, there's nothing for the judicial review to review because the resolutions have been gone. And then it's up to them to make their decision next. Up to who to make up the, um, the challenge of the Corey Park people. Yes. They um, if they want to carry it, take it the next step, they can. Well, there isn't a next no, step. No, it's for it's them. up to them. So that so so it leaves it with um, a new evaluation of options yeah. and and whatever follows from that. Process. And that's what I'm about here, making sure we got all that facts right. Mm. The, the, okay. weak, the weak point in that. Weak points in the whole thing are what's got us trouble. Yeah, like so. 
Well, that's what they're saying, but there's a whole lot of information in there as well that says that they're numerous. They are. Oh, I agree. Yeah, I agree. And yeah. there is, can be challenged on some of the things they say, on the information they currently have. And we're saying we need the whole information to make the decision. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's about what they decide to push against us. Yeah, yeah. We need so to make it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sort of trying to think of the economics of the whole deal. I mean, it's it's going to take a year to get into court if it goes to court. Don't worry about the money. Just um, me the money regardless. Well, I, I know they've spent a shitload of money on other things, on legal challenges, so I guess it's just another yeah. one. Yeah. But, but they, they've got a nasty habit of getting the bounce back on us. Well, the thing is, I guess what... What you're being, what has been put to you in the report is that there are risks in proceeding with the judicial review. That's what what option one is about, and it's and the advice that we've received is that there are elements, not all, councillor, but there are some elements that we are likely not to win. I'm going go into the details of these in the public. Based form. on the current information they received. Yes. Okay. So we're just reverting it back to council to the, the, the amendment reads request that the council information provided to the legal advisors is reviewed to ensure it is complete. Is that right. the, the yes. essence of your Okay. I'm going to put the motion now. You are. The legend favour? Aye. Aye. Yeah, well, I guess what do we do? Yeah, it's got to do it. No one against it. Yeah, well. Um, I, all I want to do is get a bloody skateboard park. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. that's um if we if we go that way. Represent the community. We'll, well, we'll go for the, I'll go, I'll yeah. vote with him. Yeah. Because yeah. we're still we're still at the other option. But be aware that it's going to cost us more money. Mm. It's going to cost money anyway. You want the right decision. It's all okay. It may still be. We, we can still come back to this anyway, Brookie. Well, I think okay. it will come. But it'll be six weeks away. Whenever. Is that right? Yes. Mr. Chairman, can I? No. No. I just um, clarify. The decision you have made today means that the judicial review will, will continue. Mm -hmm. yes. um, that mm -hmm. no further, I mean, that no further action can be undertaken with respect to the development until primarily that is dealt with. Yep. That yep. can take up to 12 months, if not longer. Yep. The, the other thing that um, that I would suggest, based on the resolution that you have just passed, is that when Council's legal advice, because I, I don't know what other information that they will be provided with that they haven't already been provided with that they have given their You're opinion right. on. The and their, and their opinion on, excuse me, Sorry. Um, this is a, a, a local government meeting that does not require or allow you to participate from the floor. Thank you. Well, this, excuse me, Councillor, um, I just want to continue to clarify this position so that everybody is aware of what the situation now involves. So the fact that the resolution requests that Council provide further information, which is what has been passed, okay. requires further information to, to be provided to its legal advisors, whatever that may be, the information that has been provided is very clear on where the risks are. That is not going to change. No, you don't know Excuse that. Excuse the, the legal advisors have provided information to the council based on, the, on, based on the information that they have received. Correct. That information stays with the legal advisors. Correct. So uh, the legal advisors will continue to provide that same opinion. That won't change. You don't know that. The, you don't know that. The weakness is still, weakness is still will still exist based on the information that the, that has been provided. That the process has been undertaken. 
The point I'm trying to get to, Councillor, is that once the information is provided back to Council, they will still have to come back to this community board to get an understanding of where you then want to take this, while at the same time the judicial review is continuing in the court. That is all I wish to say. Mm -hmm. But from a clarity perspective for the board and for the public, it is very clear that, that we are now in a stay until the information, mm -hmm. while the court process is underway, and while a further opinion is provided by uh, to back to council from its legal advisors. That is it. So there is actually no further development that can occur, no further consultation that can be undertaken, and no further processes that council will be delivering until this legal situation is dealt with. So, so uh, I take the member's point before that this could be at least two community board cycles, and if they are six weekly, then, then you are talking uh, a good three months prior to even advancing to the next stage while a, a court proceeding is underway mm -hmm. in, the, in the meantime. So don't expect anything so until that... Speaking, there's no name tags in front, and we would all like to know who is giving this advice. Yeah. yeah, who is this person? Who are you? Yeah. Who is he? Until that is sorted, then council would then follow the process from there. We understand that, Rex. Thank you. Rex, who are you, sir? Who are you? name tags in front to show you the staff. Rex Table, the GM Strategy and Governance at TCDC. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so we we'll just added three bucks to the oh. process. I'm sorry, I'll, I'll think that's, uh, I've just made a cock up, but anyway. No, you haven't. You haven't. I think, I think I have, but anyway. The panel of pressure, well. Okay, 3.1. Sorry, Brookie. Yeah, well, make your bed. Yeah. yeah. Discretionary fund application from the Tyra Information and Community Services Society. Okay, I'll take the report that's been read. Mm-hmm. Have you got money? Yes. We've got 20,000 left. I'm happy to move that one. Um, Have some information, Joe, about their signage. I've been talking about putting a sign up since I was there in 2010, mm. but it's never ever happened. Mm. Come up before in the meeting. Mm. Um, yeah, I just put some notes on my notes. Did you want? Yeah, just let me find my notes on this. Placement of the signs I've got. In what way, Warwick? You're not know, happy with where they're going to go? Well, opposite the garage, we've got a post there that's in urgent need of repair. Mm -hmm. One's hanging down like it's been shot. By it. um, I just, I mean, I, I don't like great hoardings or signage, but I realise that the information centre is um, important. <coughs> Yeah, uh, they're big signs. The man at Pacific Harbour might grizzle. Yeah. Uh, it's not going to, um, this information centre have already uh, spoken up to, and it's not going to impede them at all. Yeah, happy? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Just, you're seeking it? Yeah. Okay, I'll put it. You feel the discussion? You want five? Aye. All right. Thank you. Gary? Okay. Okay, so next. Grounds. Okay, so this is uh, process, 3 yep, yeah. process for commutable grants. People has to be given the opportunity to say if they want to prioritise grant applications. So this board has never granted any priorities. That the priorities would mean that if you say events is your priority, then commutable grant applications for an event would take priority over the others. Like I say, this board has never chosen to do priorities before, and you've taken each community board grant on its own merits. I'd say leave it as it is. Leave it as it is. Myself. Yes. Have you got comments on this? Yeah. Um, have you got a comment? No, I just made them. That's it. <laughs> okay. I mean, the board's never done I mean, it if, before. No. If, it's, no. if you, if you yeah. aim at sporting events, Possibly shut all the other people out. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Is there a reason why this is? It's part of the process. Do other boards do it? Uh, Follow the doesn't do it. Um, I don't recall that other community boards have priorities. One year, one board did do events as a priority, but then when it came to actually uh, doing the community board grants, they to apologise, they just took it all on the same merits. Right. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, we move right. on the second, we leave it as it is. Yeah. Okay. Aye. 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 Yeah. Aye. 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 Good morning, everybody. Yes, I'm here. Good morning, Nicole. Good morning. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I'll just take the report as read. Um, next two items are just uh, rent, um, sorry, right of renewal items for two leases. Uh, the first being the te um, Tara Pawanui Volunteer Coast Card. Yeah, what are they? This is in Tagatory Lane. Right? That's correct. What do they do in Tangatory Lane? I mean, I've got the, the rescue boat out at the Billy Point. Yeah. Um, Mr. Mr. Chairman, John Muston here, if I can just interrupt. Um, Tangatory Lane in our GIS system, when you call 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 up the property, Tangatory Lane at 110 stretches all the way from Tangatory Lane right up to the end of Billy Point Road and a little bit along the beach frontage. So um, it, it is it is it is it is the premises at the boat ramp. Ah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you. Don't worry about the GIS. Yes. Yeah. Just a question, John. I notice it's a six-year lease. Uh, the right of renewal of six years commencing first of July 2021. So, is that the standard sort of time frame? Is it? Um, through you, Mr. Chairman, it, it's what the, the lease, the current lease they have, provides for that term of renewal. So that's what's being put before the board. Right. So you're happy with what's going on there? Okay. Any other questions? I'm not aware of the sign. Is it? I don't want to see it go in. Go away. No. Okay. Nice. I, I move. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
There's just no discussion on um, that sort of thing is open to, to, to discussion. Their lease provides for them to have it as of right, provided they haven't breached it or, or not paid the rent or something else. So the, the association itself hasn't asked for anything other than what they're already entitled to. Thank you. I'm happy to move. Thank you. Yeah. I'm in favour? Aye. Aye. Yes. Mary, thank you. Rick program. <coughs> You again. Me again. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy to um, take the report as read and answer any questions that you may have. Uh, overall, progress is moving uh, pretty well on the majority of the projects on the work program. Okay, um, yeah, well, uh, I understand the three points up in today, is it? Today? Yes, yeah, correct. Today, so the contractors are on site today. Uh, my team are meeting with them uh, probably as we speak, uh, and we'll get that last final stage of the work done. Okay. That's quite a hell of a It's been a bloody old, mission, that. Overall. Oh, oh, yeah, so through the chair, we have talked about this a number of times at this yeah. meeting around the yeah. project and how the, uh, the staging of it and the additional costs that were incurred through a number of um, uh, challenges, uh, particularly around the um, requirements of Heritage New Zealand uh, that we understand that we have to meet. And uh, we've changed the way we do projects now as a result of that project. Uh, so, yes, I have been taking other questions on that. Yeah, uh, work. Uh, yeah. Chair, sorry. Yeah, um, yeah Bruce. Um, Bob's Renton's raised a few points. Have you seen those? Yes, I have seen those this morning, yes. Are they considered part of the discussion or not? Uh, they definitely are part of the discussion because there's, um, uh, there's some of the elements he's raised are associated with the previous work, the first stage of work. So that contract is <coughs> still obligated if there's uh, defects or any issues with any of their work, then they're obligated Thinking to Thinking about that slippery um, situation. Yeah, so we wanted to that? make a change to that, you know, yeah. if, the, um, if it's too slippery and it's causing an issue. Right. Uh, it's yeah. not just that one, it's our one as well. Right. The one over this side. The Tyra one as well. Yeah, it's, 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 okay. it's, things grow in the harbour. And I think that um, Pro, uh, Wayne Price has had a contract to go down and water blast it several yeah. times, but yeah. it doesn't last long. It doesn't last long. Okay, we, we might need to look at a, uh, a more permanent solution around that. <coughs> that sort of and this next one was the pontoon. You felt yes. the pontoon was sinking. Yes, yeah, so something to do with the wheels on the back of it? Yes, yeah, so I'm not 100% sure. I don't know the details, but I've seen the photos and it mm -hmm. does look um, that it's on an angle. Yeah. I know they added some additional buoyancy to it initially, um, which I, I believe lifted it, but it's a, another issue that they need to resolve and need to make sure that's fit. <coughs> we had a situation like that when they were putting some buffer stuff on the side to stop the boats banging against it, but it yes. leaked and filled up the water. Yeah. So they've actually foamed some of them, filled them with foam. Yes. So they stay up yeah, so they stay up and they don't yeah. just follow the water. Yeah. So oh, that's. Definitely issues that, that um, are still with the contractor. Um, tell you as well. I don't know if it's ever been changed, but I wandered down there one day and the <coughs> and the water pipe was tied up with cable ties. Right. And I didn't really think that was a very professional method of fixing water pipes. It does doesn't sound like a very professional method. I've sort of been doing it a few years. Fixing, fixing water pipes, <laughs> and I'm sure you'd never do anything like that, Chris. So, okay. <laughs> well, have, have a look at the one I did on this wall. <laughs> So, yeah, so no, we, it's another another um, item on this nag list to deal with, with the contractors while they're on site. You can get um, yeah. UV you, protected cable yeah. ties. Yeah. 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 I just one other point. I don't see Holland Close on here. Um, yeah, so, so through the chair, Holland Close is an investigation project at this stage, where right. this is just capital projects. Uh, okay. um, but obviously, in the draft uh, LTP, which all you know, councillors will be deliberating on in the next couple of weeks. Um, there's there's project budgets in there, but at the stage it's an operational um, investigation type project. So very long winded, do I might add. <coughs> yeah, through the chair, these projects do have a habit of um, uh, taking quite a long time to uh, to get traction on uh, when you're working with uh, with lots of different parties, um, other agencies, communities, those kind of things. So yeah. yeah. Sure, thank you. The toilet clock, we're up. We're 
After shade on me. Yes, that's where the chair, the, uh, the toilet block uh, is, is moving well. Yeah, so everything's kind of moving as it should do on that. Is it due for opening when? Uh, so I think... Uh, I think the June's still on? Yes. Okay. Friday through the council's weekly update. There's an invite that got sent out with publishing again this week. Okay. Public, more, more, more public opening. Public opening. Yeah. So, so when is that? Uh, I'll just ask the reason that it is. It is. This is Friday's Christmas. It was in there, but the date was still to be confirmed. Oh, okay. So it's saying it's confirmed, but not sure. Thank you. I've heard it. Already nicknamed the railway station. Ah. <laughs> it looks nice. Yeah. Um, okay, is there any further discussion on the wet program? Mm -hmm. I'll move with the, the move. Yeah. Thank you. Is this the okay. Yeah, I'll show it. Yeah. Thank you, sir. I might just stay here just while you do your action tutor, just in case it comes up. Oh, yes. I might just mm -hmm. uh, provide it as The, um, I've been back from, yeah, from the short, short box. Yeah. That meeting was quite uh, mm -hmm. something in power move, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. I'm surprised how many people, the people were for it and people against it. <coughs> <coughs> any, so, any, um, any further questions there that we you mention? I don't know. Anything you want to tell us, Bruce? Is that what it is? No, I don't think there's anything uh, really to add apart from uh, that last one. The vegetation. The last one around gathering the Perticar tree, which obviously we heard a little bit about in the public forum this morning. Um, so when my team worked through any projects, they have to look at all the options. Um, and and there's no intention at this stage to cut that tree down mm -hmm. at all. So I'm not quite sure where that... Um, where that came from, um, but uh, again, all options are possible, but at this stage we're not recommending that at all. So, um, is there talks about putting a footpath around or through yes. under? Yep. So, so at this stage, without um, predicting what the solution might be, uh, one of the options is around like footpath around the road and turn it into like a one-way um, or you know one-lane system around the tree at this stage, or or like a shared kind of use um, arrangement. Around that tree, so yeah, so it is obviously quite challenging, as the members will be aware. Um, around that, yeah, you you use that well, it is. Well, that's well, that's 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 that. I think the I think the point um, is to formalise that. If you're going to have that as your option, a shared use, you formalise it a little bit more. Yeah, it's some more traffic coming measures so that people understand that it's not, um, you know, people cars rushing through there and pedestrians, um, you know, trying to dash through at the same time. You, you know, slow things down uh, and really create. Uh, Create the environment that provides for the safe passage of um, pedestrians as well as vehicles. <coughs> Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, thank you, Bruce. Can we have a move and a second of the action schedule, please? Yep. Thank you. Second. Moving on, members' reports. Check it out. Well, uh, <coughs> I'll, I'll, Rick, I'll start. Yep, there you go. Um, for the record, and on behalf of the board, I would like to, to uh, thank the recently resigned board member Anne Stewart Ball for her time spent on the community board. Her intimate knowledge and dedication to the role was appreciated, and I'm sure that we all wish her well. Uh, well wish Anne well, and I know she will continue to add value to the various groups that she involved with here in Tyra. Uh, I've attended various council meetings over the past, past few weeks. Um, I noted uh, an address in the regional council indicating a 7.5% rate increase. I also listened to Dennis Tech uh, talking about proposed funding scheme to help uh, homeowners with insulation, 
He went on to to, to uh, report about Ulster Street in Hamilton. I don't know whether you all know Ulster Street, but it is the, the motel boulevard. That's like Kenton Street, right around. Currently, it's full of homeless people. Um, and he had some comments to uh, to make about that. Um, the TCDC has received a, a large volume of LTP submissions and a suggestion for those that uh, in future contemplating committing uh, to use bullet points rather than a long, prolonged speech. I think it's, it's quite a great idea if you just bullet point things. People will pick up on it. A reminder that rates relief is available to those who may be experiencing hardship and need to contact council. There's a need to establish or re-establish signage on the footpaths in town between the toilet block and the top shops to uh, keep the bikes and the scooters and skateboards off it. Um, <coughs> I myself have had some personal problems with them, they barrel down there. So we used to have some writing on the on the footpaths, but it seems to have disappeared. And um, a note that um, we're looking for possible ideas to possibly change our south. Our name is the Southeastern Ward. If you've got any great ideas, I'd like to the board. I'd like to hear them. Uh, and it's possible. No, I'll just leave it at that. Thank you. Um, and I no, I mentioned the skateboard, but I'm looking forward to successful. Conclusion of the long running saga of providing a skate park. <laughs> that's been torpedoed, so yeah, that's my bit. Yeah, I agree. Um, right, I attended a public meeting in, in Paoroi for the uh, about the sand dunes and the, and the Hogan Park. Uh, I was surprised at the diversity of opinions there. Um, <coughs> uh, I attended a meeting here at um, about the tsunami siren and the future of emergency warning systems. Um, we're not convinced a notification system is up to the job with our hiccups. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Uh, if we get a tsunami and it's a big one, I hope the Council and Civil Defence people are prepared for what happens. Um, and in that, I count the fact that I'll be probably on the receiving end of it. Um, <laughs> Might be a good time to resign from, <laughs> from the fire brigade. <laughs> um, um, I attended a meeting on the Holland Coast flooding. Um, I'm a bit disappointed at the speed of the that the program is being resolved. Um, I went and had a walk <coughs> around with Gordon Foster. 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 Um, while uh, and while doing this, I noted it. it the water in the creek appeared to be quite stagnant or, or polluted. Um, I phoned Jonathan Smith and, uh, and he is getting Veolia to take some samples and test. Um, it looked bloody awful actually. Um, I attended a recent ratepayers meeting here at, the, at St Francis um, and all number of things were, were discussed. Um, they're doing a, a good job keeping us on the straight and narrow. Um, been an awful lot of discussion around the community about the skateboard facility, and I guess there'll be more. Um, but uh, people need to realise that I think we all want it as fast as we can possibly get it. Construction job at Gallagher Drive has been bloody terrible. Um, <coughs> I shouldn't say bloody. It's, um, the contractors. The contractor has had inexperienced staff on the job and it is way behind schedule. Brett Kil Kilburn, the pinnacle rep, has been great and, and is frustrated with ships. Brent has been um, answered every every call I've made and several, lots of people around there have complained. Um, but thank God it's coming to an end now. But the council really need to look at who they're hiring to do these jobs, I think. <clears throat> and that's me. Should have a wash here next week. Uh, uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, 
Yeah, I too would like to say a few words regarding Anne Stewart Paul's um, departure from the committee board. I felt that was a, uh, a bit of a uh, sad loss. Uh, like we've all got, we aren't all perfect, but uh, I think her research work was fantastic, what she did, and uh, she followed through on a lot of, uh, of issues and came up with the answers. So, yeah, very sad to see her move on. Wish her the best. The long term plan. 2021-31, we've read 4,000 pages of submissions, 800 related to speakers and a 300-page agenda. So last week was a very busy week for all staff and councillors and some big decisions are still to be made, which are coming up. So uh, we look forward to that discussion. The bus transportation plan from WRC, um, we've got, got a, a concept up now, a, a two trip per day, one day a week to Thames and to Waihi, um, picking up people on the way and dropping them off. So that's for the board to consider in the next uh, meeting or so, about whether they want to fit with that and the impact on rates, etc., and how it uh, affects. So following the time and Yeah, it's that time of the year. Um, <clears throat> the Royal Valley Point, the, the, it's cracking, I believe, on the ramp or something on there. I haven't checked it out myself yet, but it cracks and goodness knows what. The, um, what's PCT? Um, Yeah, so it's an on, always as usual, it's an ongoing thing. The one what's going to have to come up before long and decision give some go ahead for this uh, boat club. I think, I know we knocked it back to a degree last time, but 
they they've had a very very good response on the meeting what they had over the holiday season, and uh, look, so I think it really they should be. Yeah, I wouldn't say encouraged to go ahead, but they, they've got to go ahead and come out with some def, definition of it. So I, I would like to see it being permission for them to go ahead to a degree. How far they can go, I don't know. But uh, it's well thought out. <coughs> and I think that's just about me done, I think. But um, yeah. yeah. Thank you, yeah. We have a move and a second and receive the members' report. So Aye. 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 Thank you very much. That's it. Yeah. Here's a meeting card. It's us. Workshop. I'll just turn off the recording. Bear with me. Thanks, George. Thank you all so much for Thank you.